Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and in this video I'm going to be draining my immersion tank uh, that is from fog hashing. It's got some bit cool 888 in here uh, BC 888 exact to be exact and we need to drain it So I got a little pump that came from fog hashing that I'm going to be siphoning the oil out of and back into this But before we do that, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor this video is brought to you by JingleMine.com. Founded in Hong Kong, but located throughout the world, they are one of the leading ASIC mining distributors out there. They have a strong relationship with Jazz Miner, which means that they can provide you the best price and the latest info or updates for your Jazz Miner. Additionally, they work hard to respond to customer inquiries or questions, providing 24-7 support, and have one of the fastest deliveries in the ASIC industry. Some of their products include the Jazz Miner X4-QZ, which can hit 840 mega hash at 340 watts while being whisper quiet and I can vouch for that and the new x16-q is on pre-sale now and can hit 1.8 giga hash at only 630 watts on etc hash lastly they accept a number of cryptocurrencies as payment so if you're interested check out the link in the description and help support our channel by supporting its partners so essentially um we're taking I'm going to use I don't know how if the oil can make it through this uh, coffee filter, but we're going to be taking that coffee filter, uh, kind of tying it around the hose that's going to drain back into this so I can filter out any debris, any contaminants um, that could affect the pump or anything in there. We want to get it out. You want the fluid as, as clean as possible. And we just need to drain this guy of all the oil that's in here, uh, remove the ASIC, do some maintenance, and uh, honestly... I'm going to be uh, replacing the pump on this particular unit. Uh, that's the whole point in today's video, but let's drain this guy first and then we'll work on the disassembly aspect of it. All right, so here's my little coffee filter condom setup. <laughs> kind of protecting that. Don't want to put it all the way down. Got that hose in there. Got the USB connected to a battery bank and then the button is right here. Ooh. Yep, it's working. It's working. The pump might be working really hard though, but it's working. It's gonna take a minute, but you can see the fluid is flowing. Might move the pump down a little bit so it's not working too hard. There we go. Pump sounds a lot better. We're flowing pretty good. I'm actually moving pretty quick too but you can see like the oil looks a little bit meh um it's draining relatively quick not too bad for a little tiny pump keeping an eye on the liquid level in here we're getting there but i wouldn't run this pump long term if you listen to it it just gets lower and lower so it's getting hot all right so i actually filled up one bucket um, very little down there, but there's still some in the loop, obviously. So we're going to need to let some air in, try to get it all back into the bottom of the system and continue draining with the pump. But that's where we're at right now. So before I continue, I just wanted to show the filter did work. You could see all the little microscopic particulates or, uh, you know, debris, uh, you know, these things can add up and be the depth of your impeller uh, filter. It's the same thing, you know, think of a, a pool motor, um, but on a smaller scale, and this is obviously moving oil and not water, but just look at all those foreign objects and materials that get cycled through the loop. How it got in there, not entirely sure. That's something I'm gonna have to investigate, but this could be the reason why I'm having to replace the pump. So I wanted to do a quick update. I got the liquid as low as I could with the pump. Um, obviously there's still a little bit in there as you can see, and that's gonna be coming out of the lowest hose, which goes to that section of the radiator, still has liquid in it. And you can see how long it is. So technically I could have this like radiator like up over there, I just <sighs> don't really have a way to do it. But anyways, there's still liquid in here. I gotta get it out. So I gotta uncurl it. Put that in, keep it as high as I can as I uncurl it, 
and go as quickly as I can to that hole so that way I can put the liquid in there. Now the bad thing is, is there's no filter um, while I'm putting stuff in here. So when I go to pour the immersion, uh, immersion liquid back in, I'm probably gonna try to figure out a way to filter the oil, make sure I capture any extra particulate uh, that might be in the radiator, right? Because of what we found in the coffee filter that might be in the radiator or might be in the hoses or might just be sitting at the very bottom of this. So I need to try to uh, filter it as much as possible, but I'm gonna continue draining. And get All right, so further forensics uh, with the ASIC out, sitting over there in the corner of my garage. You can see there's a lot of residual, what the f is that? Like, is this the two, like thermal paste that BT miners use for this crap and now it just clogged up everything? Um, is there a specific, you know, like, awesome thermal paste I don't, I don't know what that is but if we come over here to the ASIC you can see like some residue on the boards I am not sure what the hell that is it really does look like the thermal paste just I don't know I don't know if it's thermal paste or maybe you know this wasn't a new unit it was ran through the through air a lot of particulates not entirely sure but that seems to be the root cause of why this pump died so i need to clean all this up as best i can so i don't know what kind of thermal paste they use normally thermal paste inside immersion cooling uh at least good kind is no problem but that was all thermal paste at the bottom if we look carefully so i blew through the back side and you could see where the oil is coming up but some of the holes aren't and if you look very carefully like that hole is clogged some of these holes are clogged while these are opened up and those this plate down here looks like it's riveted so i can't take the plate off i'm gonna have to figure out something else all right so here's the pump right here uh, there's four screws, two on each side, kind of connect to this metal bracket, plate, whatever. Uh, and then we got to disconnect the hoses. This is 8 mil. Uh, there's one there, and then one you can kind of see it right here. Um, got to disconnect both those hoses, and then the new pump comes with this whole brass assembly right here. So I just need to swap those out. You can see it's getting its power, ground, all that stuff, 24 volt. Uh, so PWM power for the pump. And then there's also a power. We got a red and a black. Then we need to swap out for the power to the pump. So swap those out and swap that connector out. Remove this pump. Obviously you need to loosen it from here, but I'm going to try to disconnect the hoses first. Got a short 8 mil for right here. And then we got the extra long extension for coming in from the side to get all the way to that eight mil because a very awkward angle i have no room with this one to really ratchet so so this is a bit of a pain got these screws out three of them but the one back here is giving me a hard time and of course when you use the ltt screwdriver the handle is so big it won't fit with that board in the way try a basic screwdriver Still won't fit with that bore in the way. I mean, I could unplug this, maybe give me a little bit more room, but it ain't gonna give me much. And it is just really hard to get in here. Obviously, I don't wanna strip it. So I'm gonna try the LTT or the uh, iFixit kit screwdriver. Then I got a bit of an extension right here. Just gonna keep plugging away. A little bit annoying though. All right, so you really can't tell the difference, but this one's the old one and this one's the new one. We'll tear it down maybe in a separate video and see what got clogged in the pellet or anything like that. One concern I have is the angles. Like you can see this brass fitting kind of overlaps this one at the bottom, whereas this one had a little bit more spacing. You can actually see some of the liquid and residue down there, so we'll, we'll tear into that later. But this one, it gives me more room. This one's really tight, so I need to start putting it in there. Took me a little bit of finagling to try to, you know, loosen up the clamps and, and then obviously get the hoses. But nothing you shouldn't be familiar with, uh, you know, if you worked on cars. Now, one thing I do want to say is I saw a little bit of oil at the top of this. So I'm going to tighten this. It was loose down here. 
towards the bottom. So just gonna make sure that everything's tightening all the hoses. Probably try to push that clamp up a little bit, see how that goes, um, and just make sure that everything is tightened. And make sure there's no more oil down here at the bottom from uh, my spillage from the hoses. All right, there we go. New pump is in. Everything is tightened up. All of these uh, areas where the hoses actually connect to the body of the chassis have been tightened up, making sure there's no leaks right there. There's a little bit of oil, but just need to make sure there's no leaks anywhere else. Uh, the hardest part, honestly, was connecting the positive and negative uh, for the pump. That was the biggest pain. Obviously, the PWM switch is here. Ooh, we got to connect the front part of the chassis. There we go. And so technically, we're ready to fill this thing up and start again. But before we do that, I'm going to do some more checks. I'm probably going to run... Um, some liquid through here this bottom section the hose goes right into the bottom section of this tank which is below uh, those holes I might run some fluid through it some oil uh, separately and then kind of suck it back out with the small pump but just want to clean that area out and then I'm gonna fill it up next time you see it I'll fill it up uh, or it will be filled and showing that it's hashing but wasn't too bad one day sporadically 15 20 minutes here and there in the garage uh and with a really tight spot because the car is like literally right here i got no room to move um uh, but was able to do it uh definitely as far as serviceability could be a little bit thought out as far as the the next person that's might have to work on it i left one screw out uh for that pump because again that angle that this top section was you see how tight that is right there um, it wasn't leaving any space to get to that bottom hole right down there. So, um, we are good to go. Gonna bring you back once it's filled up and running, but I would say all in all, maybe two and a half hour job, uh, with all the finagling and, and awkward angles, you got to get an extension to get this way to go to the, the, um, the locking mechanism and kind of trickery, uh, but it's doable. So let's get this all hooked up, get back at it, get the ASIC back in here, but uh, might call a couple people before I do that, considering the amount of thermal paste that leaked out of this. Might be the type of grade, we know oil and, and grease thermal paste don't go well, but there are some other considerations to think of, um, because I haven't seen that with, um, you know, real standard, good, you know, G-Lid, Thermal Grizzly type paste, so we'll see. I want to show you what I drained out the very bottom through this bottom port. If you look very carefully, that looks it's a bit shiny and much bigger than some of the other flecks in here. I'm not sure if that's part of the impeller or what, but definitely that's big enough to cause an issue through the impeller. I'm gonna filter this out before I put it in the container. Before I continue and just go straight to hashing away with this thing, um, again with the coffee filter, what I'm doing is I already uh, drained one full container, five gallons, uh, draining a little bit more into here to top it off. But um, you see all that thermal paste kind of just floating at the top of this container. Before I let it get above the rim here of this ASIC where the fan was, I am literally using the hose that I'm pulling everything from to kind of go around and skim the surface and suck up all that to put it back through the filter so that way we could get all of that crap out. I don't want that going through the system. Additionally, something really dumb and not recommended, I added a garden hose filter system. All I'm trying to do is, in case there's any more metal in this radiator, I do not want it going back to the impeller. So this is a temporary solution for a quick, you know, five minute circulation, cut it off, take it out of the system, just as long as I make sure there's no particulates or big chunks coming through here and I can filter it with this mesh filter. There's also a 40 micron filter that I could downgrade to, but considering how fine some of these particulates I'm seeing in my oil is, uh, I'm gonna leave the uh, higher micron filter in there. But that's basically what I'm doing. I'll bring you guys back when I actually have the system up and running once I clean and filter every nook and cranny of this thing. See? Big difference. 
sucked all that crap out of this center section and through the top of the tank by skimming it it did aerate the liquid in the filter but if you look very carefully you could see all the little tiny particulates and thermal paste flex in there that we're capturing with the basic coffee filter so mining at home at its finest guys so we're back up and running we're on normal power mode I'm gonna tune up from here sorry for this long video but remember how murky the liquid looked at the very beginning of this video look at it now with uh, the small pump a little bit of filtering with the coffee filters and stuff we got it super cleaned up I will say during the startup process that bottom hose that you're gonna see right here had some air bubbles stuck in it and so what I did is because I have this so coiled the air was getting stuck in the hose so I lifted it up put it above here and then all the air seeped out and you just saw all these little air bubbles come out uh, but everything's flowing everything's moving quite well temperatures are looking really good let's look at the liquid temperature only 39 degrees Celsius not bad it is cool here in Florida because we're dealing with a cold front uh, coming in through North Florida had a little bit of oil leak out that um, that end point right there just tightened it up but we are showing um, hash rate we're only at 100 tera hash right now around 3300 watts thereabouts at the miner there was a new update that came out March 1st so I updated that um, and then also there was an update for the air to liquid um, firmware so if you don't have that tool hit me up I'll try to get it to you and every time there's an update the system will actually tell you obviously we're checking at the pool our hash rate hasn't shown its full potential quite yet but it is going to take some time for it to sh uh, show up at the pool level I'm just giving it some time as long as nothing is leaking and we're showing the hash rate uh, on our local network we are good to go and with the liquid flowing as it should now that the pumps restored you can see it flowing down that pipe uh, we're keeping this thing nice and cool I might add a little bit more liquid you can see my lines back there might need to add about a eighth of an inch more of liquid but I gets it really close to that hole back there that I'm running the C19 to C20 cord but we're up and running it's working we're back to hashing Bitcoin and that's all I care about sorry for the long form video but I'm glad you joined me throughout this entire process and actually let me show you the last time that I filtered this oil in this coffee filter if you look very carefully there's like some tiny flecks of metal it looks like in there it looks like some of its thermal paste then there's some blackish uh, material uh, but it also looks like there's some metal flex in there so cleaning all that out of the system uh, definitely shows that there was a problem probably that broke the impeller or the impeller um, shaft so everything is back up and running we still got plenty of liquid I would say not enough to do another container but just enough to keep uh, keep this guy topped up and that is going to do it for this video. If you made it this far, definitely hit the like button. I am so sorry for the long form video, but you came with me on this journey to replace the pump in this fog hashing C1 container uh, or immersion uh, cooling container uh, setup. This is, I think, revision two, and they have like three or four that's out right now. If you want to check them out, I'll link them down in the description. Make sure you let them know Serpent sent you. But do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed, hit notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.